Hello, welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man. We are playing Bant Spirits, and this time we are running up against Jund. This is our opening hand. We have a Wanderer, a High Wrath Collected Company, and Reflector Mage, three lands, one of which is a Horizon Canopy. So yeah, pretty happy with this. Looks like a solid hand. Lead with the Hierarch. She's going to get bolted from our opponent. Play a Wanderer. I'm going to save the second Wanderer because that can pump the first Wanderer. I'm going to play Scavenge News, which is not ideal. So we're just going to reflect a mage, bounce that away. It's a bit of a tempo win for us. Complex Inquisition, which gets rid of the Drog Skull. Follows up with a 4 5 Tarmogoyf. We get our fourth land so we can collect a company here. I'm going to do it on our turn because we can pump up the Mausoleum Wanderer here by dropping some spirits onto the battlefield. So I'm going to play the one, uh, a Drogskull Captain and the Wanderer here and attack for four. So I think this is kind of a race situation. So in theory we could have tried to collect the company into Spell Queller or something else. But it bolts the Drogskull Captain. Can't really do anything about that, unfortunately. Wanderers aren't big enough to uh, prevent that. And drops the Scavenging Ooze. Or a Misty Rainforest, which doesn't do a whole lot for us. But we are going to be able to drop the Wanderer and fly over for four, putting our punt down to seven. With the Misty in hand, just as a sort of bluff, I guess. Because I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of difference. And I also don't think we want to be fetching for no good reason. So, Scavenging Ooze is going to eat some creatures, and we're going to take 8 down to 5. We we'll draw off the card off the Horizon Canopy. Phantasmal Image is the result. I suppose we probably should have played that land last turn, just to thin our deck at least. But uh, yeah, Phantasmal Image is pretty good here. So we're going to lead with this, the Selfless Spirit, which is going to prompt our opponent to Fatal Push our Mausoleum Wanderer. And then Phantasmal Image here. Well, I mean, yeah, the reason we led with the Selfless Spirit is because we wanted to see if that was going to prompt any removal from our opponent. Because if it didn't, in theory, we could have uh, copied the Mausoleum Wanderer. But uh, as it stands, I think the best play here is now to copy the Reflector Mage. That way we can bounce Scavenging Ooze. Our opponent just has a 4 5 Tarmogoyf, which we can block fairly easily. Unless our opponent has two removal spells. And uh, yeah, turns out they don't, and we are able to pick up the win. So uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose there is some risk with that play, but our opponent would need two removal spells, and the one on for the selfless spirit would have to be uncounterable. So I think we're in fairly solid shape there, and that managed to pick up the win. So let's go to sideboard. Okay, so against Jund, or green-black rock decks generally, um, you can take out the Vials, and uh, also Phantasmal Image isn't that great, just because they've got a lot of targeted removal. In terms of the things to bring in, um, Thali is fairly good in this matchup, just because it makes their removal spells that much more expensive, uh, and slows them down that much more. Um, we can also look to bring in the Path to get rid of things like Tarmogoyf and things that might get in our way or outsize us a little bit too much. And then we can look at some other options. We have a bring in Geist to try and, uh, try and bring the beatdowns. Obviously it's a untargetable creature which is a fairly substantial threat at the same time so Geist is an option. Uh, we could also think about maybe bringing Knight of Autumn in that slot as well. Just as a uh, as a good utility card, obviously it can uh, deal with some things that it might be bringing in, or uh, some options from their deck. So could destroy an engineered explosives potentially. 
could gain us some life to help us with a race or just generally be a fairly sizable threat. So those are both decent options. Um, I think the recommendation generally is to bring Geist, but I uh, can see situations where Geist may not be the best. Okay, so on with game two against Jund. So this is Arabin and Canned. It's a little clunky. Obviously Geist can be very good, but not having anything to play until turn three is not great. So I think we're gonna mulligan this. Yeah. So this hand is also pretty awkward. If our opponent leads with Inquisition or Thought Seize and just takes his Hierarch, then we might be in a lot of trouble. But I don't really want to multi five against a, car a deck that's potentially running Inquisition and etc. See a Supreme Phantom on top, which we're going to bottom. But does Inquisition and take our Hierarch, so not great. Going to lead with Temple Garden tapped. Opponent plays Goyf. Just Supreme Phantom, so things are not looking great for us. Inquisition takes the Phantom. Punt attacks for two. There's a stomping ground. We draw Misty, so we finally got a second land. Blood Braid Elf into Engineered Explosives. It's probably as good as we could have hoped for. Um, yeah, obviously, one of the problems with bringing in uh, Engineered Explosives on the Jund end is that they might just. Uh, cascade into it, in which case it doesn't really do anything. So, probably the deadest card they could have possibly hit. So, that is certainly good for us given that we have made a very slow start to this game. Uh, we are going to be able to rattle chains here, end of turn. Uh, the often forgotten thing about rattle chains is that it, can, it makes all your spirits have flash. So, you can start dropping in things like selfless spirit end of turn if you so desire not too far away from collective company here which could help turn the tide of this game it goes for an inquisition I think we're just going to spell collar here just because we might as well keep the spell collar around it's going to attack for six I'm going to uh, trade with the blood braid off it seems like the best thing we can do here We draw a Windswept Heath. Might as well attack because I don't really have any intention of blocking. Scavenger Goose eats a creature. Going to attacks. I'm going to company here. So we're going to get some Reflector Mage and Phantasmal Image. Um, as far as I'm aware of, it certainly seems to be the way we can't copy the creature that just came into play with Collective Company alongside it, so I couldn't collect, copy the Reflector Mage, which would have been the ideal situation. I probably should have just copied the Goyf. I was maybe being a bit greedy with uh, copying the Scavenging Ooze here. Because that way we could just block. And they would bounce off each other. This way we're taking four here, unless we want to uh, jump. So yeah, that was probably a bit greedy. Probably should have just copied the Goyf. Although scavenging does give us a way to uh, draw some cards. So as it turns out, we draw another Reflector Mage anyway. So we're going to be able to bounce the Goyf. Attack for four. Opponent draws a Lightning Bolt off the Dark Confidant. And yeah, that sort of things up. So yeah, not a great game for us. I think we um, we just stalled. Um, we did manage to bring it back fairly decently, but unfortunately we went into the lightning bolt range. Maybe we should have chumped with this uh, reflecting reflection reflector mage. Although probably we should have just made this into a timer guys, and then we could have blocked and uh, kept our life total nice and safe. Uh, we're still in a lot of danger here regardless, but yeah, I think we could have played that better and uh, unfortunately that led to us losing here. 
Okay, so here we are with game three, the decider. Um, this is our opening hand. Pretty nice. I mean, if we nothing happens to our hierarch, then we can turn to Geist. And uh, otherwise, we are potentially looking at the Thalia or a Spell Queller. So, I think this works out pretty nicely. But Thought Seize is going to take the Geist, unfortunately. We're just going to pass with Spell Queller up. Obviously, our opponent knows about. Going to play the Mausoleum Wanderer, keeping Spell Queller up still. That looks at the Inquisitioners. We're going to Spell Queller. Plays Blood Crypt into Assassin's Trophy, which we're going to counter. So we don't get a hit for the uh, so the spell queller stays alive. And then we're just gonna run out the rest of our hand here. Get to attack for four with the spell queller and drop a Thalia into play. Gonna place confidant and scavenging ooze. We draw horizon canopy, which is just gonna crack here. Finds us a spell queller, which is pretty good. Attack for four, put up another eight. Take one from drawing a lightning bolt. But obviously, that's quite costly now with Thalia in play. So we can spell queller that. And the opponent doesn't have anything else. We're going to cast the Supreme Phantom. Which we can attack for six here. There's no real way of doing the extra point of damage. So we're just gonna have to hope we survive the next turn. Scavenging use eats a couple of creatures out of the graveyard, comes a four four. And then our opponent Oops, collected brutality by the looks of it. Goes down to one, and uh, yeah, obviously not good enough. I mean, they're gonna have to cast collected brutality for three mana for a start, and then it's fairly easy for us to deal one damage, even if they were able to remove something from the board. So I think that ends on a pretty good high, um, and we managed to beat Jund here. With uh, which is able to uh, really like stymie their uh, removal with Thalia, which is very helpful, and the spell quellers did their job as well in terms of uh, preventing their removal and uh, other ways to interact with us. So we managed to make a board presence that they weren't able to deal with, and uh, that wraps up the game.